I'm Jeannie Lee. I'm a professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School and a molecular biologist at Massachusetts General Hospital. And today I'd like to tell you about our efforts to reactivate a sex chromosome to treat uh, Rett syndrome and other X-linked disorders. So exit activation is something that takes place very early in female development. Um, it's absolutely essential for progression through development. So why would we ever want to reactivate the inactive X? So it turns out that more than 200 disease genes have been ascribed to the X chromosome, and the X uh, is otherwise a good reservoir of more than a thousand functional genes that don't get utilized for the rest of female life. So what we would like to know is can we partially unlock the inactive X chromosome for therapeutic purposes? The first disease indication is Rett syndrome, which is a severe neurodevelopmental disorder that uh, results from mutations in the x gene called MECP2. The disorder mostly affects girls, but the girls are actually born normal. But within the first year to two of life, they begin to experience seizures, they developmentally regress, and most girls never learn to walk or talk. So this is an absolutely devastating lifelong disorder for which there's currently no disease-specific treatment. So it's a very serious unmet need. However, there is some hope because studies have shown that at least in a mouse model, uh, one could reverse the neurological deficits of Rett syndrome if we were to give back MECP2 protein to the brain, suggesting that Rett syndrome may actually be curable. So our strategy has been to partially reactivate uh, the inactive X chromosome in order to restore MECP2 expression importantly, using the girl's own native genes. So the idea here is that the disease cells in the brain actually carry a normal copy of MECP2, except that this gene is locked up on the inactive X chromosome. So our goal is to reactivate that inactive X and use the girl's own genes to restore MECP2 expression to approximately five to 20% which we and others have shown to be a, a therapeutic level. So uh, our strategy is epigenetic in nature, so it is not gene therapy. And uh, I wanted to point out that it addresses the root cause, uh, which is the absence of MECP2, without introducing exogenous DNA sequences, without the need for a viral delivery, and without the risk of uh, MECP2 overexpression, which is just as bad as not having enough MECP2. So our approach is uh, new. We are asking the question, why not target the master regulator of X inactivation, which is uh, exist itself. So this is shown here in pink, painting or coding the inactive X chromosome in cis. And uh, the hypothesis is that that exists then recruits inactivating factors to that chromosome. So our strategy then is to target exist RNA using antisent oligonucleotides or ASOs to degrade its expression and to disrupt exist silence and function as a result. But we've learned that targeting exist was not enough by itself. So we needed to add a destabilizer of gene silencing which in this case is a small molecule inhibitor of DNA methyltransferase one called decidamine. And it turns out that this combination absolutely did the trick. So when we just gave cells decidamine, nothing happened to MECP2. When we gave it just the exist ASO, nothing happened. But when we put the two of them together, we got a synergistic reactivation uh, of 30,000 fold, uh, uh, MECP2 protein in cells, which is approximately two to 5% of normal uh, levels. So we've since improved the level of reactivation. I'm gonna tell you about that in a few minutes, but first I wanna mention that we needed to develop in parallel a female model for Rett syndrome in order to test our X reactivating drugs. And uh, the reason for having to do this is because Rett syndrome has mostly been studied in male mice. So that's, of course, not useful to us because we wanted to use X reactivation. Uh, so uh, to make a long story short, we've succeeded in developing this female model. And here I'm showing that uh, this female model very nicely recapitulates the shortened lifespan uh, that is seen in the Rett syndrome male. 
And uh, without actually showing you the data, I'll just mention that the mouse also recapitulates the severe neurological phenotypes that include weakness, tremors, and uh, gait disturbance. But we're, what we're most excited about is the fact that our new female model also recapitulates the self-injurious behavior and the repetitive behaviors that are frequently seen in human Rett syndrome as well as other autism spectrum disorders. Uh, so these cutaneous lesions that you see in, in the pictures are due to an excessive sort of self-grooming and self-biting, which they will do for up to 15 minutes at a time, even under human observation. So that is extremely abnormal. Uh, mice normally only groom themselves for a few seconds at a time. Now, the other thing that our model recapitulates is uh, the occurrence of frequent seizures in the mouse. Okay, so um, we've also learned that uh, it doesn't take very much MECP2 to improve the, the phenotype. So even a one to 5% MECP2 expression will improve lifespan as well as various phenotypic scores. So for example, a 1% MECP2 expression in the brain will extend lifespan by a month. Five to 10% MECP2 expression can improve lifespan by three to eight fold. So, uh, and not just lifespan, but also these various neurological phenotypes I told you about before. Okay, so now the $64,000 question here is, is X reactivation safe? And the, ask this question because um, we would be reactivating not just MECP2, but per, potentially several other genes that are on the inactive X chromosome. However, notably, the uh, relative impact on those other X-linked genes would be very small compared to the disproportionate impact that we would expect of MECP2. So to address this question, we've taken a systematic investigation of organ sensitivities to exist loss and uh, X reactivation. We've done this in various organs and tissues, including the kidney, skin, gut, brain, immune cells, and various others, and I'm just gonna show you uh, two representative results. So here we've deleted exist uh, by more than 99, or reduced the expression of exist by more than 99% in the gut. And you see a significant X reactivation, but absolutely no effect on the morbidity or mortality of these female mice across the lifespan. And likewise, we've deleted exist in the brain, which is the target organ, and observed no obvious morbidity or mortality across the lifespan. So from these types of experiments, we concluded that, uh, at least in the mouse, organs largely tolerate a degree of X reactivation. So then we've um, proceeded to test this uh, drug candidate in vivo in a small animal model. We've injected the exist ASO and decidabine into the brain and observed that EXIST is markedly reduced uh, by more than 95% in the whole brain over two weeks. And we see this accompanying a small increase in MECP2 expression in the brain. And uh, we've now uh, progressed to developing a, a, a human clinical candidate, uh, first having to redesign the EXIST ASO to target human EXIST because the sequence is slightly different from the mouse and identified 10 to 20 efficacious antisense oligonucleotides as shown here. So after 24 to 48 hours, using a number of these uh, EXIST oligos, we're able to achieve more than a 95% reduction in uh, EXIST expression. And concomitantly, uh, this exist ASO DNMT1 inhibitor combination uh, results in a significant reactivation in patient cells. So we're consistently seeing a 10 to 20% reactivation in various somatic tissues, including uh, fibroblasts and in neuroprogenitor cells. So in summary, we have developed a robust female model for Rett syndrome. We've shown that organs are largely tolerant of partial X reactivation. We've identified a two modality approach for MECP2 reactivation and have uh, developed several potential clinical candidates that we are now looking to advance into the clinic. Thank you very much.